often if you don't know what is available you're often in the dark and i certainly don't want you to miss out on what is current and what is best for your practice and for your patient and hello everyone as usual i'm bringing you uh, information from wherever I go and I'm here in Austin, Texas at the Texas Urologic Society meeting. I'm here with Shelly with SRS Medical. Now those of you who don't do your cuff to evaluate your, your patients before or actually any BPH patient, uh, you might want to look into it. I've been using it for a little while and I know a lot of you have never heard of it or not are not using it but I want to introduce this to you. Um, it's a good product that I think adds a lot of value to you as a clinician, as a practice, and also it helps your patients in trying to figure out uh, what is going on with his bladder. So Shelly, why don't you tell us a little bit about SRS and what do you guys offer? Sure. Um, so SRS um, is a um, medical device company and we have three products. One of them is spanner which is a temporary prosthetic stent the other one that we have is ep1 which um, measures uh, bladder pressure mm -hmm. by connecting to an intact fully um, the other is our flagship and that would be eurocuff okay and eurocuff is a non-invasive bladder pressure diagnostics that allows you to get bladder pressure and flow information non-invasively without having to place any catheters into the body Wonderful. And how, how do you uh, suggest that a urology practice implement uh, Eurocuff in their practice? So the best way to use Eurocuff, like I said, it's non-invasive and it's a basic diagnostic test, just like any other type of diagnostic test that you would use. And you would want to use it to, um, with any of your male patients that are coming in with BPH or Let's symptoms. And I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, so any any man with trouble urinating, right? And so when they when they come into your office, uh, when for instance, for the way I do is I see the patient first, do the exam, get a history, and then I'm scheduling them for some sort of testing. Is that okay. is that an optimal so, way to do yes, do things? Yes, yes. Okay, so I understand what you're asking now. So yeah, you want to bring your patients in, like I said, that are experiencing um, let symptoms. Anybody that has on their AUA score of an eight or higher, mm. that's really your ideal patient to get mm. in and get that baseline test done on them. Um, and then uh, you would see them after you get the Eurocuff test results and you would share those results with them because it really does help to um, the patient to understand and keep engaged in their medical care yeah. so that you're not losing them to follow up. Yeah, and I'm, get, I'm just going to give you guys a view. Now, when, you, when you're when you watching this, this is going to be uh, backwards and it's a mirror image. But Shelly, if you, if you don't mind going through this graph in a very general sense of what we're seeing here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is the nomogram that is used, and this is our front page. And ideally, a patient that is not in trouble or um, has good bladder pressure and flow, they're somewhere over here when they're starting out. But as they progress in their BPH stage, they're gonna do this backwards horseshoe. So eventually they're gonna work up here to this high pressure, high flow. And then obviously this line here is where deep compensation begins. So they're going to work over here to the obstructed category, which is our high pressure but low flow now. And then eventually they'll obviously work themselves down here to this low pressure, low flow. So very good. And let me have you hold that and I'll, I'll try to uh, explain it. And um, so come on over here. Okay. Yep, there we go. And we'll have you hold that up. So the, on the uh, x-axis is uh, flow rate and on the uh, y-axis here, uh, bring, come on, come, hold this up for me if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Uh, the image is pretty small, so I want to get close to the uh, camera here. So the x-axis, you have flow, and on y-axis, you have pressure, bladder pressure, and that's why Eurocuff measures. When a man has no trouble urinating, a little bit, this is the way that I explain it to my patients, when he has, he exerts a little bit of pressure in the bladder, he gets a really, really good flow, right? And then as the bladder decompensates from obstruction, a lot of pressure is exerted and then you get some flow but over time with more obstruction high pressure exerted by the bladder gives you not so good flow and that's where you are in this red zone and once the bladder completely decompensates a little bit of uh, 
your, your bladder is no longer able to generate any pressure and then your flow sucks. So that's, that's the way I explain things to the patient. And like Shelly said, it goes from green to this area and then goes in that direction. Very easy. This is the actual uh, result, actual yeah, printout of the SRS Correct. report. Now keep in mind that X is um, peak pressure, peak flow. So mm -hmm. it's one moment in time, right? Mm -hmm. As we capture that data mm -hmm. um, on the back page is a much more comprehensive um, bit of information back here. Um, this is how we're obtaining the data. And then like, like, for instance, I'll jump over here to this third page. This graph right here is actually showing you what their bladder pressure is. Um, sorry. <laughs> And it gives you, each one of these little dots are data that we're collecting from their bladder pressure as they're voiding. And then we just kind of connect the dots with the line here. And then this is their actual urine flow down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of good, uh, useful information on the graph. Uh, and uh, you can use this. So, so the, way I, the way I see these patients is that they come in with their symptoms, I'll examine them, and then I'll schedule them for a urine cuff to see how they're doing. And then we decide on an intervention ranging from observation, medical therapy, minimally invasive surgical treatment, or some sort of a procedure in the operating room to remove the, open up the prostate somehow. And then afterwards, what you can do if you follow these patients long-term, you can bring the patients back a year later or something like that and repeat the test. Or if the patient's on medical therapy, you can consider repeating the test in the future to kind of follow the progress and make sure that their bladder and detrusor are, function are preserved so that they're not just sitting on the sidelines, taking medication, feeling so somewhat good, and then they're damaging their bladders in the long term. So that's what I'm trying to, I, as Dr. Exactly. Wayne Kwong would say, I'm the defender of the detrusor <laughs> or, or savior of the, of the bladder. The bladder, absolutely. So I think you are actually looking at using your cup exactly how we would want a physician to do that. Um, a lot of physicians use it for their surgical patients, which is great, and they should, but it's really ideally used to identify and catch those guys in, um, in the earlier stages before they get into that really you know, bad situation where they've got low pressure, low flow. We really wanna make sure that we're treating them, get them off their medication and get them some kind of inter intervention sooner than later. Yeah, totally. And you know, you, you guys have seen these patients, you operate on them and they still have horrible symptoms. And that's because I think a lot of it is just having these patients waiting way too long before they receive the care they actually need. This allows you to show the patient, hey, there's something actually bad going on. You want to keep an eye on it and graphics, pictures. And for those of you who are doing cystoscopy, if you have a way to show the patients what you're seeing, on a screen and share that image with them, they are the, the, the light bulb is going to go off and they're, they're going to understand, oh my gosh, that's why I pee the way I do. And same thing with this. If you can show them the graph with the high pressure and the low flow, it, it really helps them a lot. Now, I know you cover a large area in the U.S., but not the entire U.S. This is, a, uh, this is an audience that covers the entire United States. How would someone get a hold of you or, or someone at SRS to access this uh, device? Well, we do have a website, so they could go to the SRS Medical website, and obviously there's phone numbers and there's ways to connect with our home office if they don't happen to have or know who their local rep is. But we've got reps that are covering all over the country, and that's probably the easiest and the fastest way to, to get a hold of somebody is to just go through our website and, and it, share. Okay, and there are about 40 million men in the U.S. with BPA, so you can't say that you don't have patients. One of the neat ways that you can consider adopting this technology, SRS has made it really, really easy as far as capital cost because the device can't be, the, the unit can't be expensive, but there's a way to offset that cost. Would you mind briefly talk about that? Sure. So we offer evaluation programs that would allow a, a, a physician to bring Eurocup into their practice and evaluate it over a period of 60 days. Um, it will come with Part of the evaluation includes disposables that will come with that um, evaluation program. And that in itself, it not only allows you the opportunity to see the clinical value, um, see the reports and see how it will impact you in your practice, but it will also allow you to see the reimbursement and how that will also impact your practice as well. And those disposables will offset the cost of the, the capital purchase. 
Yeah, so it's a really neat program so that you're not outlaying a lot of capital. It's an easier sell to your C-suite folks in adopting this technology. They have a, you know, personally speaking, they have a really, really good support team ever since I started. I even called after hours to talk to one of, one of your clinical support people, Leticia, yeah. uh -huh. and she was more than willing to talk to me about what I'm seeing after I started, after I've implemented, after she's come in to help set things up for us. So that was, that was very helpful. Having a good support team is really important. Yeah, we have clinical specialists that are all over the country and they're there and available if you have you know, questions about the reports and um, just wanting to talk to somebody about interpreting and what you're looking at. We're always happy to do that. We're happy to come inside and help with your staff and we provide as much training as needed for your, your office to get you guys going and comfortable but also there to support in that interpretation and the report so that everybody knows what they're looking at. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Ellie, for sharing your product and, and uh, information. Yes, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. And uh, as usual, I, you know, if I'm paid by anybody, I will disclose that. This is not a sponsor video. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Please take care of yourself and take care of each other. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Bye.